Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're in the world, it's Jose here, welcoming you to another episode of Amazing Worlds in this new setting, uh, which is quite sparse, it's quite boring, however, it's got aircon, it's got aircon, it's ridiculously hot and humid here, I cannot do the review in my office as I normally do, so I'm just hiding here under the cool of the aircon in a little corner of the living room. So this is what you get today. So, what am I talking about today? Today I am talking about the Dark Disciple Trilogy by Margaret Weiss, which is kind of in the internal chronology of the Dragonlance uh, universe, kind of the, the, the last trilogy. With this, the, the, the series, the saga, the world is sort of done. Now, uh, the, the books, uh, the trilogy, is comprised of Amber and Ashes, published in 2004, Amber and Ion in 2006, and Amber and Blood in 2008, which was kind of around the time where the role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons was going through the 3.5 editions. It was kind of accompanying uh, the game and the release of the Dragonlance campaign setting for the game. And the reason I'm mentioning this would become obvious towards the end of the review. So, hold the thought. Now, the story takes over immediately after the events of the War of Souls trilogy, so if you haven't done so, you can check my review of that on my playlist of all the Dragonlance uh, series that I'm reviewing, where Mina is crying, she's all forlorn, because the Dark Queen Takesis has been killed, and as she is there wondering what to do, uh, with her lieutenant, the Minotaur Galda, all of a sudden a bunch of Minotaurs appear for no reason and take Galda away. And um, uh, Chamosh, the god of the dead, uh, decides to sort of seduce uh, Mina and gets her to start up a new cult for uh, the god of death. Basically, he wants a rebrand. He's not happy how he's perceived in the world. Um, so he wants to be perceived as a, like a way cooler kind of guy, and uh, between the two of them, they start this vampire-like uh, cult thing going on in the world. Now, the whole Minotaur thing I mention again because, quite possibly, for the big fan of the Dragonlance series, there in between War of Souls and uh, Dark Disciple, you could read the Minotaur Wars. Trilogy by Richard A. Neck, um, which I haven't done so, but I've read a couple of his books, and maybe it'll be interesting to sort of fill in the gap as to what's going on there. So basically, uh, I don't want to spoil the plot here, but basically, after the death of Takesis, as mentioned, uh, the Queen of Darkness, evil god, uh, the balance of power between the gods is sort of um, the balance is unbalanced. Uh, so Paladine, the the, the 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 god of light and good or whatever, he decides to take on. This is what's happening at the end of War of Souls. But he decides to take on a, a mortality to become an elf, mortal to restore power uh, between the gods. So the universe is uh, in check, and basically there's a war between the gods. They all vying for power. They all have their little plots and schemes which are not entirely explained, they're not entirely clear to the reader, but who are we to understand the will of the gods sort of thing? And basically, in books one and two, we follow uh, Rhys Mason, who is a monk of the god Majera, uh, so monk as in the sort of Shaolin monk type thing, and uh, his companion, uh, a kanda called um, Nightshade, and Nightshade is a night stalker, which is kind of very much anti... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a much against type, against archetype Kanda. So usually Kanda are basically roguish, thievish, funny counterpoint to the heroes. And that's how they are conceived in the original trilogies and in the game. Uh, but here, Nightshade, he He's not a good thief at all, which goes against the nature of Kanda. He's not curious, but he's got the strange power of being able to see the dead and talk to the dead. So, 
uh, in this trilogy where there's a slightly darker tone to previous ones, that's, that's what we get. And in books one and two we follow them as they have been kind of aimlessly bounced around the world by different gods, trying to get them to find different artifacts or complete different quests to do the old switcheroo. And then in book three we focus on the character of Mina and her fate and what's going to happen uh, to her. So, I mean, overall, Dragonlance has always been more about plot than characters. That's not to say there aren't great characters throughout the series, but certainly not here. The characters aren't very fleshed out. There's not a great deal of character growth and development. That's not to say there isn't. Probably Mina is the one that has got the most, but there isn't great. And the plot isn't fantastic either. I think Margaret Wise uh, is missing her longtime writing partner, uh, Tracy Hickman, here. And sort of, we don't really necessarily get to go somewhere. Um, so that's kind of my, my take on, on the series. Uh, there's a couple of issues with the editions, and I don't know if it's because I've read it in the Kindle or you get the same mistakes in print, but there's a lot of repeated words, words that shouldn't be in a certain place being that there's, there's a lot of mistakes. Uh, that's not to say that every page is full of them, but enough to be noticeable and far too many uh, for, for a professionally published, printed uh, book. Um, now, I suppose, thematically, the, this trilogy, the books, are trying to say something about faith and religion and how to sort of not lose faith in your God, whatever your God may be, uh, because we don't really understand the will of the gods, you know, they work in mysterious ways. However, I would say that it is quite easy to have faith in the gods presented in Dragonlance because they do very often take on human forms, they interact with the characters and they can take you to places at the snap of their fingers and they can control the weather. You know, certainly it's very easy to believe in a god that is there changing the weather or teleporting you from one continent to another. It's a little bit more complicated to have faith in our gods in the real world it's been a while since we've seen a miracle, isn't it? But there's also a slightly sort of more sort of positive note on on death, and and, and I think the, the 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 books try to leave us uh, with a you know death is not the end, but only a transition, and 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 that the, there is something is is that sort of belief that there is something after death. Uh, that we will go on to, that we don't quite know what it is. Um, and that, that's kind of the, the spirit of, of the books. Um, which, is, which, is, which is fine, but like I said, um, I think possibly, I don't want to come across as two colours because I know that Margaret Wise has continued writing and she's done other things apart from Dragonlance. Uh, I, I don't know how well they've done, um, but the, you know these books. Are, the last one was printed 14 years ago. But I think the world of Dragonlance is done. Whatever stories they want, whatever things they wanted to say, whatever stories they wanted to tell in this world, are done. Now there's a new trilogy coming from Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman, but it's set back in the world of the lands, from what I understand, and it's focusing on a different set of characters. So I'm not quite sure what, what to do with that. Um, I think if you're reading Dragonlance, if you're sort of following, starting with Chronicles and then moving on to Legends, uh, I've got a whole review on Dragonlance, links in the description below. But I think War of Souls is a much better, stronger ending point for the series than Dark Disciple. Uh, I think this was kind of flogging a, a dead horse type thing. And back to my original point on the Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 edition, which I barely played, 
Um, because that's when I was moving countries and university, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the last book, so uh, Amber and Blood, there's a whole appendix on the role-playing game, on how to introduce uh, certain classes and the gods and the character of Mina in your campaign and, 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 and these new lieutenants of the god of death and his cult and how to introduce that. This is not a game supplement. This was meant to be a novel set in a fantasy world that told a story and wanted to say something. I think... my uh, I didn't like to see that in the books. This is... This is are they trying to sell product? I mean, this is it's not going to age well, is it? We are on fifth edition now. Uh, Dragonlance campaign setting wasn't released for fourth edition, and it hasn't been released for fifth edition as far as I'm aware. So that left a slightly bitter taste in my mouth. I suppose I'm glad I read them because Dragonlance has been a part of my life since my very early teenage years, possibly before that. I fell in love with the original characters. I was a little bit annoyed about what they did with Tasselhoff in War of Souls, and I, and I think I'm, I'm done. I think I'm done with Dragonlance. I might pick up the Lost Chronicles at some point, for completeness sake. I think that makes sense in my head. But um, this has put a bit of a um, sour note to the series. And I don't know if I'm that intrigued by the new trilogy. But anyway, this is all I've got for today. By the time you watch this, I am going to be on my holiday journeys. I'll be going to Belgium. Um, from Belgium, I'll be going to the UK. And then we'll come back to Spain and we'll be doing a bit of traveling. So I, I, I'm not entirely sure how, how much um, updating and reviews I'm going to be able to do. But, as usual, thank you ever so much for watching. Please, 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 like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. Take loads and loads of care. And I'll see you next time. Bye.